What is one shot that you can develop to make your forehand into a massive weapon? Well, one of those shots is the inside-in forehand. I'm gonna show you exactly how you can hit the inside-in forehand to the best of your ability. Hi, this is Jeff Salzenstein, founder of Tennis Evolution, former top 100 ATB pro, and let's dig in today and really break down the inside-in forehand. Now, first of all, we have to define what the inside-in forehand is. What this shot is, is when you move around your backhand to hit a forehand, so you're in the backhand corner, you have two options. You can play inside out, or you can play the ball straight ahead inside in. Essentially, you're hitting the ball down the line, down the line from the backhand corner. That's the inside in. And the inside in is a different type of shot than the inside out. That's how I like to treat it. So as you're developing your game, I want you to focus on hitting your inside in different than your inside out. So let's talk about a couple of characteristics today that can help you really understand this shot and practice it the right way. First of all, let's talk about court position. I really like the players that I work with to hit their inside in from on the baseline or inside the baseline. I typically don't like my players to hit the inside in from three or four feet behind the baseline. That's a time to play the ball down the middle or even high inside out, okay? So on the inside in, we wanna hit the ball from on the baseline or slightly inside the baseline. That court positioning is very important. And when we do that, it oftentimes will change our swing path and our follow through. As soon as I start to move up into the court, I'm going to typically have a lower finish when I'm on the baseline or inside the baseline. The more that I move back, I'm going to finish higher or I'm gonna use a buggy whip. So I'm on the baseline or slightly in, and when I swing, I finish usually down by the, down, down by the shoulder or even a little bit lower down by the hip if I wanna get the ball up and down. Now, if you're a player that goes out today or tomorrow and tries that and you're hitting your inside in in the net, then I would encourage you to still finish higher over the shoulder. But for those advanced players, for players that wanna get the ball up and down, you wanna swing and you wanna finish by the shoulder or a little bit lower. That will allow you to get the ball up and down. Let's talk a little bit about targets. Now, this is an interesting one. And again, you have to increase your awareness around where your balls are landing. But typically, I like to treat this shot like a passing shot. Okay, so what do I mean by that? A passing shot, you like to dip. You don't really go for depth. So what I do is I put targets for my players just past the service line, provided they can hit with enough pace. And I make them accelerate with their hand so that the ball drops down somewhere in this area. As soon as I start putting targets deeper on the baseline for the inside in, I start to notice that players fly their forehand. Again, if you're a player that hits in the net or short, we wanna make these targets deeper. But typically we want the target to be shorter when we wanna get the ball up and down on the inside in forehand. Another thing to consider is that I see this a lot. Players will hit their inside in and they'll pull the ball wide. If that's the case, then you wanna make sure you have plenty of room from the single sideline, okay, so that you're not gonna miss this ball wide. When you get excited, you're gonna have a tendency to pull off the ball and miss the ball wide, okay? So we want the safe target just past the service line. So let me uh, just demonstrate, let me demonstrate a, a, a forehand, an inside-in forehand. And so essentially what's gonna happen is I'm gonna be in the middle of the court and when the ball comes, I'm gonna move around it and then I'm gonna turn my hand. Okay, I'll do it again. Didn't have great spacing on that one. Get around it. And even if that ball lands, look where I finished. Okay, I caught the racket, I finished down in here. Even if the ball lands at the service line, if the ball is going off of the court with, with rotation, that's better than hitting it straight and flat. So again, we're trying to get the ball to spin and go up and down, okay? Very, very important. One other big key is the footwork. How do we move around this ball? 
so I see a lot of players, when they move around this ball, uh, their initial move is to actually turn sideways like this. And that's a big mistake. So what I like to do is I give players two options. The first one is the first move around the ball. This foot goes in front of the outside leg with the initial move. Okay, now you won't see all pros do this. You'll see Nadal, he'll go behind like this, but what he does differently than most players is when he steps behind here, then he ends up facing his hips to the net again. Many of you out there will, will drop this leg and then stay sideways, and we don't want that. So what I do is I have my players actually cross in front and then shuffle and you can see where my hips are aligned here right i'm not turned sideways as soon as you turn sideways you might feel jammed or blocked i see this a lot with players so we've got to keep the hips facing the net more and one way that can help is with your initial first move if that foot that inside leg comes in front of the outside leg on the first move after that then you can shuffle the other option, if that's awkward for you, is just to shuffle with your first move. So you shuffle, 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 you're around the ball, you're in a semi-open stance. It's a great way to do it. So I'll demonstrate the first option where I bring the foot in front with the first move. Okay, now I'll demonstrate the second option where I shuffle on the first move. Okay, so that's what we want to focus on, getting the proper movement around the ball. So, so important. So what have we talked about so far? We've covered court position. We want to make sure you're on the baseline or inside the baseline instead of way back hitting this inside in. This is an offensive shot to take control of the point. We've talked about targets, aiming safe to the right targets. We've talked about swing path, finishing at the shoulder or below because you're inside the court and you wanna get it up and down. And we've also talked about movement around the ball. Now, again, this is a shot you're going to use when you've either hit a great down the line or a great inside out, and you're gonna to wanna to finish with this shot. This is more of a finishing shot. But as you move up in levels, this is a great shot that you can develop. And also, if you need to get it to an opponent's weaker side. Typically, as a right-hander, you're going to be playing to your opponent's forehand. So you wouldn't hit this inside in unless you're really in that offensive position and you've stretched out your opponent. So, to review, inside in. Let's get our court positioning right. Let's get the targets right. Let's get the swing path and the shape of the shot correct, and let's get our footwork dialed in. Hopefully you enjoyed today's lesson on the inside-in forehand. I had a lot of fun making it for you, breaking it all down for you, giving you that attention to detail, that out-of-the-box attention that you need. Instead of the cookie-cutter approach, I'm really getting in there, digging in, helping you get the details that you need so that you can get out on the court and start practicing. So I really appreciate you guys watching today. If you want more free tips from Tennis Evolution, you can click somewhere in this video or click the description, I'm sorry, click the link in the description below and go ahead and turn your notifications on, subscribe to the channel. We wanna keep updating you and give us a thumbs up if you like. Thanks so much for your time today. This is Jeff Salzenstein. We will see you at the next lesson.